In this devotional, I'm going to share with you three thoughts from Genesis chapter 35, verses 9 through 15, where I'll ask the question, what blessing does the Lord give Jacob? Genesis 35, verses 9 through 15 says, God appeared to Jacob again when he came from Paden Aram and blessed him. And God said to him, Your name is Jacob. No longer shall your name be called Jacob, but Israel shall be your name. So he called his name Israel, and God said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and multiply. A nation and a company of nations shall come from you, and kings shall come from your own body. The land that I gave to Abraham and Isaac, I will give to you, and I will give the land to your offspring after you. Then God went up from him in the place where he had spoken with him. And Jacob set up a pillar in the place where he had spoken with him, a pillar of stone. He poured out a drink offering on it and poured oil on it. So Jacob called the name of the place where God had spoken with him, Bethel. God has made his appearance known to Abraham and to Isaac, and when he makes his appearance known to these patriarchs, he lets them know that they are going to be the fathers of a nation, that they are going to inherit the land in which they are wandering. And this is the promise that the Lord has given to them. And here, when Jacob is returning back, returning back from his time spent in the north with Laban, he is given the same sorts of promises from the Lord. He is engaged by God and told that through him, all of the world will ultimately be blessed. So here in Genesis 35 verses 9 through 15, we find out the blessing that the Lord gives to Jacob. Thought number one, new name. The Lord gives Jacob a new name. He's no longer going to be called Jacob, but his new name is going to be called Israel. And Israel means struggles with God. If you've been reading through the Bible with me, you'll note that he gets this name when he is wrestling all night, contending with the Lord. And he discovers in the morning, after he has been wrestling all night and the Lord has dislocated his hip, he discovers that he has been fighting with the Lord the entire time. And it's there where God first calls him Israel. And here again, during this experience that Jacob is having with God, he is given the name Israel again. And he's told that his name is going to be Israel. And this is how he's going to be identified. And this becomes the identifying marker of the people of God, that they struggle with God. And isn't that just a perfect picture of the people of Israel's experience with the Lord? that they struggle with him, they struggle to obey him, they struggle to remain in covenant relationship with him, but that the Lord is faithful to them and holds tight to them, regardless of what happens. Thought number two, nations. One of the blessings that the Lord gives to Jacob is that he is going to be the father of a nation, and not just a nation, but his descendants are going to be many nations, that nations will come from him. And this is such a great blessing. It's a promise of continued fertility for his family. It's a promise that his line is going to continue on. And as his line continues on, it's going to have an impact on all of the world. Isn't that such a great blessing? Wouldn't you like to know that your family line is going to continue on, that God is going to continue to bless and have relationship with your people long after you've died? I would love to have that promise. I would love to be able to embrace it. And here, this is the promise that the Lord gives to Jacob, that he's going to be the father of multiple nations, that there is going to be so many people that come from him that you won't even be able to count them. Some of them are going to be physical descendants and some of them are going to be adopted in. That's where all of us who are not Jewish lie because we are adopted in and made a part of these nations by faith in Christ Jesus. We're engrafted into the people of God because of what Christ has done. We're a part of that great nation. Thought number three, land. We sort of miss oftentimes, I think, the promise of land and what all that means for these patriarchs. We forget that land is the means by which sustenance is had. I personally, I live in the Western world and sometimes I might grow a little bit of my own food in a little garden or something like that. But most of the time, the food that I eat comes from far away. 
It doesn't come from right near me. And we're sort of separated if we live in the West very much from the source of our food. So we don't necessarily think about land as the great blessing that the people in the ancient world would recognize it as being. But for Jacob, he's promised that this land in which he is currently wandering, this land that he is walking around, that Abraham and Isaac both wandered in, this land is going to be given to his descendants, that they will have it, they will possess it, they will overrun it. They will all be able to live there and feast on the blessing that comes from this very fertile land in which the Lord has planted them. The land becomes a sign of the provision of God, that he is caring for them and ensuring their continued survival by giving them a place to lay their head. These three thoughts come from the assigned reading of Genesis chapters 32 through 35. If you'd like to read through the Bible with me, you can do so by subscribing to this channel, by clicking on the link in the description, or by joining the Facebook group Through the Bible, where we are reading the text of Scripture together.